Hey guys, D-Mike here for another episode of Pokemon Brilliant Diamond. Last time we got started, we got our very first Pokedex and Pokemon, Charlie the Chimchar. Very exciting. If you aren't excited, you can get out. So here we are in Sand Gem Town. This is the first place that you can go after the first place you can go. So how about that? People here are very excited for us that we have our very first Pokedex and they don't. So, time to flex on these fools. Absolutely. And we learned that battling Pokemon and healing them is very good. So, in case you weren't aware of that, now you know. <laughs> A good trainer makes sure that your Pokemon don't faint. So, if you do let your Pokemon faint, you suck. That's just how it is. If your Pokemon ever faint in a Pokemon game, why bother playing? That's how she feels. Let's go ahead and infiltrate Dawn's house and talk to potentially her dad? My son and grandchild help, okay. His son, I don't know, that must be Dawn's dad obviously, but I don't know if that's ever actually really discussed in this game, who Dawn's dad is. Not that I know. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and head onward and outward and run into Dawn, speak of the devil, did we tell our family? Oh, oops. My bad, I forgot to tell mom. What am I doing with my life? That's the problem when I do these recordings is that sometimes I forget what progress I have and haven't made. So there's that. Case in point, I totally forgot to give mom the old heads up that we're about to become an orphan. So we'll go ahead and rectify that now. We'll go home and talk to mommy dearest. Let her know that we're about to do one of the most unsafe things possible for a 10 year old. So that's great. In the meantime of doing this, I uh, just wanted to give a shout out to myself. If you're enjoying this, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. And if you haven't, tell your friends. Tell your friends about DMike Plays and let them know that you're enjoying yourself. Pass along. And if they've got a YouTube channel, maybe encourage them to subscribe too. That'd be super duper. I would really appreciate all of it. So thank you for your support, and let's get back to things. Yes. And we have a guidebook now. I don't know if this was something from the original. That's probably a phrase I'm going to say a ton. It's a key item. I believe this is just supposed to be a... Uh, kind of like a little tutorial if you need any help, little hints. So mom envies us. I don't know what sort of like a universe this is, where, you know, it's it's just casual and normal for like parents to send their children out. And apparently like, we've talked to our mom and so she's got closure. She's like, this is totally fine for me to send my 10 year old child out on an adventure into the world with wild animals. But Barry's mom is like, mm-mm. I have no idea where he is. Ah, uh, Barry. Don't worry. We will deliver it for you. I don't remember us working for the UPS. Or the USPS. We're not his delivery service, but we do take the parcel. We will be kind and generous this time. And it seems like Barry has headed to Jubilife City. I apologize in advance if I'm skipping through this text a little bit quickly. It's kind of boring. So I will try to slow that down. We're forgetting something important. Hopefully it's cookies. Oh, it's our hat. It is not cookies. And a scarf. Isn't that adorable? We look like we're about to go and play like a few rounds of golf in between a corporate meeting. Thanks, Mom. Gotta keep our... Our head warm, it's important. Okay, so onward and outward. Going to do my best to, oh, those clouds. <laughs> that cloud texture just popped in randomly, that's not good. Um, that's okay. I'm gonna do my best to try to avoid encounters right now. In the early going of, of this Let's Play, I'm just going to run from the majority of things, but I'm gonna try to like edit most of this out in the future. I just know that now this isn't really a huge deal. 
but I, I don't intend to keep a lot of these random encounters in, in this series. I know that's not really fun to watch, so I will be mindful of that. And now, now we can pester Dawn. Or she can pester us, however you want to look at it. She's kind of stopping us from being able to get where we want to go. So in case you were wondering, now we're going to learn how to catch a Pokemon. This is very exciting. And it's a wild Bidoof. Sometimes I feel like a wild Bidoof. Bidoof is kind of the meme Pokemon from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl from the Sinnoh games. Being a beaver and looking incredibly goofy, also pretty adorable, I would say. But Bidoof actually has a lot of utility as a Pokemon. I mean, it's not the worst Pokemon. I don't know. I would not personally use it as part of my team meant for battle. However, outside of battle, it has a lot of utility, but we'll get to that later. I don't want to spoil anything. So Don's going to go ahead and catch herself with Bidoof. Or I don't know if she's going to keep it. I don't know. I don't think we actually wind up battling with Don in this game. So I guess that Bidoof's just going to sit in a PC forever. Who knows? And the game is actually self-aware. I was actually going to make a comment about that. Is that usually when you are going into Pokemon battles, half health, depending upon what type of Pokemon it is, will be okay. So different Pokemon have different catch rates. So when you go into grass and you stumble upon a wild Pokemon, the less rare it is, the easier it is to catch. That's just kind of how that goes. It's very true. We can also put Pokemon to sleep by using a Pokemon's move. We don't have the ability to do that yet, but thankfully, Dawn is sharing her big balls with us, and we, uh, yeah. We've got Pokeballs now, so we can go ahead and check those out. Very exciting. It is a lot of fun to have your Pokemon along with you. Unfortunately, we don't have our ability to have our Pokemon follow us yet, but before too long, that will certainly happen. So we can check out our bag and see how many balls. We've been given 20. I don't remember that being in the original. I think you got like five. So the new games are obviously more generous. But we can go ahead and check out our trainer card. This is fun. We have 8,000 Poke Dollars. It says, oh, we've seen two Pokemon. Great. And as you can see, today is the 21st of November. So great. I don't know if I really intend to check out the trainer card very often, but there you have it. We're going to go ahead and make our way to Jubilife City. And we'll have an encounter here with a wild Starly. As we've already seen now for the third time. Although technically the first time we saw that Starly, it attacked us. But I'm actually going to catch this Starly if I can. Unless I accidentally kill it. That's not the goal. But um, yeah, this is going to be one of the members of my team for now. The team itself is going to evolve and change as time goes on. I'm going to try to mix it up. I don't want to have things get too samey as I play. Hopefully this is not too much to knock it out. Great. I feel like that first attack did about half, and that did like half of half. So I'm not entirely sure how that worked. But hey, it doesn't matter. So we'll see if this is going to be good enough to catch our very first Pokemon. Three shakes. And done. Very good. Starly has been caught forever. Taking away its perpetual freedom to serve us as its master and overlord. Great. Let's go ahead and check out Starly's Pokedata in the Pokedex. They flock in great numbers, though small. They flap their wings with great power. But with great power comes great responsibility. So we have a female Starly. And her name will be Sharon. These are just names that I'm literally coming up with off the top of my head. So don't think too hard about where these are coming from. And they mean nothing. I mean, they mean everything, but they also mean nothing. So just a heads up on that. And this looks like this could potentially be our first trainer battle. It is. When you lock eyes with a trainer, you must battle them. It's required. See? There it is. Okay. So I actually probably should have put Starly in the front, but I did not because I forgot. 
But what's nice in this game, I do believe that, like, well, maybe it's not nice, I don't know. In Pokemon Sword and Shield, they implemented a system where there was automatic experience share. So all of your Pokemon will get some of the experience, and you can't turn that off, I believe, in that game. And I'm pretty sure you can't turn that off in this game either. I think that it's pretty much required. Well, I guess I shouldn't say required. I guess it's like, it's just like, you have to do it. You just have to do it, you know? You can't get outside of it. It's mandated. Okay, so I don't think I have a, a potion, so this could actually go pretty poorly for me. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think I do have anything to heal myself. I do not. This is a horrible choice. Okay. So nothing like potentially losing your very first Pokemon battle. I probably should have just scratched three times. Oops. We'll see how this goes. I never said I was good at Pokemon. So at least I have that going for me. Would really enjoy the opportunity to uh, get a critical hit. I don't know all the fancy stats and metrics and algorithms and stuff like that. But I do know that if you get a critical hit, I think that it... Um, it doubles or triples the damage you do, and it kind of ignores all the the debuffs. In this case, I've been growled many times. Okay, well, thankfully the game was as dumb as I am sometimes, and decided to have their Starly growl three times in a row. Okay, so the, yeah, there it is. So there is automatic experience share, which I guess is kind of nice. It does hold your hand a little bit, but now you don't have to swap your Pokemon in and out like you would previously. Raising them should be a little bit easier. And at level 6, Charlie learns his first fire move, so he's not entirely useless. Very good. That's right. We are number 1. We almost lost that battle, actually. So, I don't want to feel too confident at all. Okay. So, we're doing great. Actually, I'm going to pop back into Sand Gem Town. Hopefully avoiding encounters. I don't know if it's this the case in this game. But in other games, if you walked slowly through the grass, I think that it lowered the encounter rate. I'm throwing out all this information like I know this for a fact. I don't. This is mostly educated guesses based on nostalgia, which could be entirely wrong. So feel free to correct me if you'd like. I don't know it all, and I'm not going to pretend like I do. But in the meantime, we're going to have this cutie Nurse Joy. Actually, I don't know if this is Nurse Joy, but maybe she is. Uh, Nurse Joy Doppelganger. And Sinnoh help us out to heal our Pokemon. And we don't really, I guess you don't technically need to swap your Pokemon in and out. In previous Pokemon games, when you'd be training your Pokemon, you would have to swap them in and out. You'd start with your weaker Pokemon, and then that weak Pokemon would, you would change it mid-battle. And then you would put in your strong Pokemon, and then in doing so they'd both get experience. But I guess the developers realized that that's just too difficult. Kids these days just cannot handle swip swapping, changing their Pokemon in and out. Just don't have time for that. So instead, we're going to get a heavy dose of Charlie in this episode. Because Starly, Sharon, the Starly, is not quite equipped to do much yet. As time goes on and as moves are learned and things get stronger, then we'll be okay. But for now, not so much. Now what I do think is neat is that they've moved the move info screen to the Y button. So you can just go ahead and check this here. And I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a tutorial on this right now. I don't think this is super useful because we don't have a ton to talk about. But Pokemon's attacks are broken down into their stats of special attack and regular attack. Special attack is... Um, special moves and then regular attack is physical moves. So I don't know what the icon is for physical. I think it's probably some, yeah. So it's kind of like a starburst and that means that's a physical move using that regular attack stat and their special attack stat is this kind of concentric circles thing and that means that it's going to be a special move. It depends per move. It used to be the type of move that it was. Like all water moves used to be special all I don't know, normal moves used to be physical, etc. So that's the way things were, but then in this game, they had the special physical split that happened, and I think that it was meant to kind of change the, the way people played and to make things a little bit more 
have some variety, I guess, in the game and not just tie moves to types. And that's kind of fun. I think that's a, that's a neat way to do it. So as you can see, looks like Charlie right now is kind of excelling a little bit in the physical attack department. So we'll go ahead and keep our eye on that. I don't know the stat spread for, for Chimchars. I don't remember if they're more physically driven, if they're more uh, special driven. But what's nice is that because Chimchar is a fire type Pokemon, we're using a fire type move. So we get what's called Stab, same type attack bonus. You get one and a half times the damage every time that you use a move that is the same type as your Pokemon. Now, if you use a move that's the same type of, as your Pokemon and it goes along with their physical or special stats, then you do even more damage, obviously. But Charlie is uh, heckin' killing it right now. That attack stat is equal to special attack, so I guess maybe maybe for now, you know, we don't have to worry about that. But having Ember is really nice. So we will gladly take your lunch money. Thank you. You don't need it anyway. We need it. Okay, so I'm trying my best to sneak through here and avoid the grass. I don't want to have too many encounters. In the future, if that becomes a problem where there's a lot of encounters like caves, you know, you'll wind up bumping into like Zubats and stuff. Uh, I'll do my best to transition out of those. And here's a new Pokemon, at least for this game. This is Shinx. Very cute. If you couldn't have already guessed, Shinx is an electric type and it knows Intimidate which cuts our attack stat in half, I believe. And I don't know if that's just for physical attack or special attack, maybe both, but not a huge deal. I'm assuming that it's a physical attack debuff. So we'll go ahead and check that out right now because our physical and special are about the same. Okay, yeah, so that looks like that was probably more of a physical reduction, that's okay. We're not too worried about that. But Chinx is pretty nice, it would be nice to find one. Kinda feel bad about taking it down, it's like a cuddly little cat. Is it a cat or is it a dog? I don't know. Is it cat dog? Anybody remember that show? Please don't sue me, Nickelodeon. Okay, so Sharon has leveled up. She's doing pretty well. I like Pokemon that are fast, that's kind of my big thing. I like Pokemon that hit hard and are fast. So hard and fast is the way that I like to do it. And if I can, I like to make sure that all my Pokemon are kind of that way. It doesn't have to be that way. It's not a requirement, but I do like it. And we get our very first potion. I believe potions hit, heal 20 HP. Let's go ahead and check to confirm that I am brilliant. Yes, so still epic, doing great. And after three trainer battles, we're gonna head into Jubilife City. The first big city in the game. And look who it is. Dawn again. She's apparently carrying a... Uh, looks like a pumpkin roll would be very nice this time of year. She should share that with us. I would love a pumpkin roll. And in Jubilife City, there is a trainer school, which we will check out. It seems like Barry has gone to the trainer school. So we will go ahead and... Move on to that. Let's see what this sign says. In weird gibberish, it's Jubilife City, the city of joy. Wow. Who would have thought? But the Jubilife City theme is very nice. I mean, I like all the music in this game. This is one of those few games that, at least in this series, that I think back on. And I feel like the music of this one stuck with me the most. It just, it's very nostalgic and... I think it's, there's a lot of variety, which I think that they did a nice job with it. But then again, I might just be being biased, who knows. But actually I wanna see, for a moment, I'm just gonna try to do a couple wild encounters to see if I can find, I believe that there are Shanks out here. And I think Shanks would be a cool addition to the team if I can find one. Okay, speak of the Diablo, great. So we found a watch, <laughs> that animation's very cute. Looks like it was almost yawning, and that's okay. So having three Pokemon would be nice. It's a male Shanx, and I've got just the name for it. I don't actually, that was a, that was a bluff. I have no idea what I'm gonna name it. I will, I will do this on the spot as I do basically everything in my life. I mean, what fun is, 
preparing and doing things intentionally. Why not just wing everything you do? Words to live by from D My Plays. Actually, don't do that. Or do it. I don't know. Live your life. You do whatever you want. Carpe diem, everybody. So we'll see if we can lock this Shinx away in our ball. And we do. That's right. Our second Pokemon. Now, once again, just keep in mind the... And you get you get experience for catching Pokemon now. That that's kind of like a, a thing they added in in Pokemon um, in Pokemon Let's Go, which I think is nice. Or not nice. Some people don't like to have the kind of hand holding. But anyway, this is Shinx. It's the Flash Pokemon. All of its fur dazzles the dangerous sense. It flees while the foe is momentarily blinded. It's kind of a neat little evolutionary thing to protect Shinxes, I guess. And this Shinx. The male Shinx, um, let's see, what's a good name for a male Shinx? His name will be, drum roll please. I'm not gonna insert a drum roll. I'm just trying to give myself time to think of a great S name. His name will be, Steven, with a V. So I apologize for those of you who are Stevens with PHs, Stevens, but we're going with Steven with the V. There it is. Two S Pokemon, lots of variety. And because of the experience share, we don't actually need to use Shinx yet. The problem with these Pokemon, if I can show you them real quick, is that they don't really have moves that are any good. So if you look at their moves, we're not dealing with a whole lot right now. We don't have any sort of same type attack bonus moves. We don't have anything that's type specific, you know, tackle, leer, growl, etc. So we don't really have a ton to work with right now. That's okay. But that is what the bountiful harvest of embers will be. Just nuking everybody we possibly can. That's how it is. Okay, so that's good for you. You're writing some essays. I don't miss homework. Does anybody here watching this video, do you ever have dreams? or nightmares where you feel like you're still in school, you wake up and in your dreams you have an essay or you know homework to do and then you wake up and you realize that, that was just your dreams being rude. Not fun. Should look up topics we're not familiar with. Well, we're actually a pro at this game. So no worries, you guys are in good hands here at DMike Industries. Wow. So Barry must have a photographic memory, or he is a compulsive liar. And we do, we will share the parcel with Barry. Even though he should have gone and gotten it himself. But it's a town map! One of the things that was really neat in the original Pokemon Diamond and Pearl is that that being a DS game, the dual screens, your adventure would happen on the top screen. But on the bottom screen, there was a device which we'll obtain later that would let you cycle through all kinds of kind of fun gimmicks, one of which was the town maps. You could always have your map on hand to see where you're going. And according to Barry, it seems like Orberg City is our next destination where there's a gym. Great. So we will head there eventually, but for now, we've got some, uh, some cheeks to clap here in the trainer school. Put these kids in their places. So I learned something recently, not related to Pokemon, that apparently, yes, so that here you go, you learn about type advantages and disadvantages. I learned something that apparently, which I think is interesting, is that young children, we're talking like anywhere between the ages of like, I don't know, five to eight or something like that, um, lack computer literacy skills like when I was a child. When I was a child, I was taught how to use a computer when I was a little kid, like to learn how to type and to click around and save on the floppy disk, which is irrelevant now. But kids nowadays are more in tune with touchscreen technology like iPads and, don't sue me Apple, um, smartphones, I should just say tablets and smartphones. So they're used to that and that's where technology is going. But you ask a kid, put him in front of a laptop, well, good luck. So in the meantime, I'm not trying to dunk on children by the way. I know that technology always evolves and you just take what you've got we're going to go ahead and do a battle with school kid Harrison. Let's punish him for having blue rim glasses. What a dork. 
He has an Abra. That is a Pokemon from the original Pokemon games, which is very exciting. Abra was one of my favorites. Not Abra itself, actually. Oh, okay. Well, Abra apparently knows Charge Beam now. I don't remember that being a thing. In the original games, when you would have an Abra, and you'd find it, especially in the wild, what would typically happen is Abra would just use the move Teleport, and you wouldn't be able to catch Abra. Oh, this is great. This is awesome. What could possibly go wrong here? Now, as you've noticed, Abra is wildly weak to special type moves. So I'm actually going to use my potion here because I'm getting my behind paddled. I said I was going to do it to them, but that is clearly not what's happening. I would try not to lose a Pokemon battle in my in my second episode. Also, this Abra is crazy fast. Chimchar is also fast, but apparently not as fast as this Abra. So I guess Harrison is just going to spam Charge Beam till the end of forever. And it seems like one of the side effects, some moves have this, is a secondary effect of a move besides doing damage, is it will raise a stat. It depends upon what it is. Some raise one stat, some raise a bunch of stats. It really just depends. But speaking of raising, we are getting level ups left and right. Everybody levels up. Everybody is getting in the pool right now. And what's nice is when you do level up, it shows you the stats you gain for everybody. But this is also kind of new that Pokemon would have all of your Pokemon gaining experience at the same time. That's not a thing. There used to be a move called Experience All that you could attach to as a held item, but now it's everybody gets this. So that's very interesting. And I do believe it's possible to fight both of these children, which is wonderful. You should always fight children. And we're not doing so hot on the HPs. Let's go ahead and take a quick pop back into the Pokemon Center. Thankfully, it's right here. I thought this game was actually going to throw me a bone and be a little bit easier, but I mean, who knows? I thought that was a nice little actually update that they gave that average charge beam. I think that's cool. So good for them. Mixing it up a little bit. Keeping things fresh. I respect it. Maybe it had Charge Beam all along. My my knowledge of the original games, it's been 10 plus years since I've played them. So you'll have to forgive me or don't forgive me. Punish me with your words. And so she kindly asked for a battle. So when someone kindly asks you to do something, in return you destroy them. That's actually them's the rules so we'll see what she's got she also she also has an abra if i had to hazard a guess i bet this abra also knows charge beam so what would be nice <laughs> okay so we're learning very quickly that these guys love charge beam i don't know if that's an electric type or not in terms of moves it's been a long time i'd have to look into it but Abra is very weak against our physical might. Cannot handle our heat. Not literally, because we're not using Ember, but it seems like that level up was just enough to be a two-hit knockout. And Abra is done. Yeah, this is wild. Like, these Pokemon are leveling up way too fast. <laughs> I hope that that doesn't cheese the game. That's one of my concerns, is having a game that has the experience all like this could potentially wind up leading to things being a little bit too easy. I mean, I know that these are games, as development of games goes into the future, there's kind of a trend in towards like holding hands a little bit. Not to say like, back in my day, games were super hard and I had to walk up here to school both ways, whatever nonsense like that. But there is a bit of a trend of like things getting a little bit easier. And part of that's not necessarily a bad thing because it does make a game more inclusive for other people so it's not it's not an issue it's not always a bad thing so apparently by beating both children we can get what's called a technical machine and we are given tm tens oh plural so i'm assuming that means that tms in this game like some of the other games are infinite use and this is work up so gives you a boost to your attack and special attack at the same time that's pretty neat so go ahead and check that out, actually. 
and see if I was correct. Oh no, you there's a limited amount, but you do get more than one, which is nice. And Charlie and Sharon can learn work up Steven. Steven's not about to go get worked up. Absolutely not. Okay. So that went pretty well. And next time, we're gonna find out what this crazy fellow wants to do with us. So thanks for watching everybody. I've been D-Mike, this has been Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, and I'll see you next time. Bye.